In this lesson, we'll talk about using Xcode's debugger. You can find the sample project for this lesson in your working files directory. I've added a few additional methods to our NSString category that we started in the previous lesson. Let's take a look at these. I added a contain string method, so a string can be asked if it contains a substring, and also an is equal to string ignoring case method. So oftentimes I might want to compare the quality of strings, but I'm not particularly concerned about the case. So I've added some additional functionality, and then I'm calling these in these two blocks of code. But I appear to have some problems. I have the source string Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and I'm going to ask the Sgt. Pepper, does it contain the string hearts? So I would expect that to return true but currently it's returning false, or it's returning no. So I seem to have a problem with this method. This other method, I also have another problem here. So here's my source string rubber sole, and I'm going to ask it, is it equal to string, this mangled case version of the same string? And I want to ignore the case. So I would expect this to return yes, but it too is returning no. Let's just run the application so you can see what I'm talking about. So not quite the results I'm looking for. To resolve these problems, let's do some debugging. Xcode actually ships with two different debuggers. If we go up to the Scheme Selector and select Edit Scheme, under the Info tab, you'll see a little drop-down called Debugger. It's currently set to LLDB. This is the sibling component to the LLVM compiler that we use. It does also have GDB, which is the sibling to GCC, the older compiler that we used to use. And you can also set it to none. I'm not quite sure why you might want to do that. But you can toggle back and forth between GDB and LLDB. And sometimes it can be useful as one provides some better debugging information than the other. For right now, I'll leave it set on LLDB. Select OK. Before I can actually start debugging, I need to add some breakpoints to my project. I can do that very simply by clicking this gutter and just add as many of these breakpoints as I might want to. You can actually go up to the Breakpoints Navigator to see all of these breakpoints. And if you get breakpoints scattered throughout a variety of classes, this can often be a useful view to quickly jump to those breakpoints. I can click a breakpoint to disable it. I can click it again to re-enable it. If I want to toggle breakpoints on and off globally, I can do so through the toolbar. I can remove these breakpoints by simply dragging and dropping. Get this fun little poof animation. I can also do that from the Breakpoints Navigator view as well. But let's start with this contain string method and see what's going on with this. So I've set a breakpoint. I will run the application. And you can see that execution stops at that breakpoint. In the debugger area, I'm currently showing just the console. But I can split this so that I can see a variables view on the left and the console on the right. And this is typically the view you'll want to use when you're debugging. But in the variables view, I can see the current values of any variables that are in scope. Now, above the variables view, there's a debugger bar. So there's a continue button. So if I've got multiple breakpoints, for instance, I'll drop another breakpoint here. And if I hit continue, it's just going to skip over to the next breakpoint. Turn that one off, and I'll rerun the application again. Next to that is a step over button. So this will allow me to step line by line through my code. Next to that is a step into button. So if I wanted to step into the method that's being called in this particular line of code, I can hit step into. This will jump me into the method. From here, I can step over, go line by line. As soon as I'm done looking at this method, I can actually step back out by clicking the button on the right. This will take me back to where I was previously. So I can see Sgt. Pepper. Well, I can't quite see it here, but if I right-click on this and select Print Description of Sgt. Pepper, I can see that printed out to the console. And let me do the same thing for Contains Result. So this is currently returning a result of No. So I seem to have some problem in my logic. So let me just stop, and I will rerun this again. I'll step over and then step into this contain string method. So I'll step over this line of code and take a look at my range. So I'm asking for the range of that substring. And the substring that I passed in was hearts. So I know the string should be in here. 
The range also looks good to me as well, because I can see it's got a location of 21, so that's the index location within that string. And it's got a length of six, so it appears like it found a valid range to me. Let me step over and take a look at my contains variable, but this is returning false. So I'm asking for range.location equals to ns not found. Oh, well, there's my problem right there. This shouldn't be equals ns not found. It should be not equals to ns not found. Let's run this again and let's see what happens this time. Step over, step into. So my range still looks good. And step over again. Now my contains variable contains the value true. So that's what I wanted. Let's hit continue. And let's open up the console to see what got printed there. So contain string, yes. And that's exactly what I was hoping to see. Let me switch back to the main app. And let's just test this out real quick. I'll type in the word club. Make sure that evaluates to true as well. Hit run. And let me just remove that breakpoint. Hit continue. And that worked as well. So that looks good. All right, let's take a look at our other method. Run the app. So here's my source string, and I want to step into this is equal to string method. So my first line of code, and I'm passing in the value of true, so I want to ignore the case. So let me step over. Oh, well, right there, that seems to be a problem because I'm falling into the wrong block. If ignore case is false, I essentially just want to default to the standard is equal to string method. Instead, really what I meant to do is fall into this block. So why is that not happening? Well, this is true. Oh, but I've got this incorrect. This is evaluating to false. So I just have a mistake in my logic. Let me stop this. And I'll actually drop a breakpoint right here. Because if this goes through, it should hit this line of code. I'll switch back to my main app. And let me drop this one out of here as well. I'll rerun the application. And there we go. Now we're falling into the right block of code. So I will run that. And now the strings are equal. Let's just do another quick test on that. Back to main app. Change these both to uppercase as well. Run it, and everything looks good. Tracking down bugs can be one of the harder things you'll do when you're developing an iOS app. So I think you'll find Xcode's debugger to be an indispensable tool. I would certainly recommend experimenting with both GDB and LLDB, as both have their strengths and weaknesses, and knowing those strengths and weaknesses can help you choose the right one for your debugging needs.